All right. Coming from somewhere in the middle of our country, a.k.a. Austin, we have... Uh, no, no. Arlington, Texas, my friend. We're not Arlington. In, that's another world. We're in the heart and soul of Texas. Heart and soul. Somewhere okay. between Dallas and Fort Worth. Well, our um, our foreign correspondent... Foreign, on the road <laughs> correspondent, Lord Buckley, beating the bushes to get you stories into your home. Exactly. Exactly. And... Not able to keep himself out of the news. We did know that the FBI report dropped, which is like, okay, that's fine. We've looked at it. Um, interesting, not a whole lot in there, just high-level points of, guess what? Those are real guns. They really work. They mm -hmm. work the way they were designed to work. And um, I guess the headline is, there's only one way to make that gun fire. It's by... Pulling the trigger. Shocking, I know. Very well, shocking. Well, it also has, it, it, it clarifies the DNA of the four people involved it does. that are on the bullets and gun and casings, right, Eric? Right, which is, of course, um, well, I can't remember, didn't get deep into the details of who was what, but I think Sarah Zachary is on the casings, but uh, I don't know if Dave Halls was on the casings or was on the gun. I know that Dave Halls is on the gun, Baldwin is on the gun. Hannah Reed was obviously on the gun. Sarah Zachary's may have been on both the gun and the casings. Not sure. Uh, Hannah right. Reed was on both the um, gun and the casings, which is, again, kind of obvious because she did load it. I mean, I, I, there's the report is really saying that everything is kind of as expected, right? I mean, did anything come out as a surprise to you? Um, no. In fact, what surprised me was the scientific level of the depth of the scientific report that it went into some depth uh, without accusing anyone or getting into the weeds political or criminal or anything else it, you know what i mean it was able to be devoid of any criminality or uh, finger pointing and just focus on the science that's what i thought uh, was professional about it now this report there's some timeline questions as to when it was done eric i mean it says july 20th on it but if you look back there's dates like December 18th, parts are finished, and and then into the new year. And well, I think they had some pieces. I mean, because they, yeah, and they maybe tested on pieces. tons of stuff. I mean, I yeah. couldn't believe the yeah. amount. They, they tested, like, um, ammo cases and, I, I mean, just all kinds of. Well, if they had done this level of testing on the Manlika Carcano that was flown in a, in a U.S. Air Force jet to the same lab in Quantico, Virginia, <laughs> in 1963 on November 23rd, we might have had more answers, but I guess they wanted quicker results back then. Well, this is true. And I guess the um, big controversy that did come up uh, was Baldwin's lawyer. And this is the part. It's like, can they ever just learn to shut up? And they, the point of this episode is obviously Baldwin can't, but apparently his lawyer can't either. Right. Um, released a quote. There's a CNN story. And the lawyer said, the gun fired in testing only one time without having to pull the trigger, when the hammer was pulled back and the gun broke in two different places, attorney Lewis, Luke Nikas said in an email to CNN. Wow. The FBI was unable to fire the gun in any prior test, even when pulling the trigger, because it was in such poor condition. What? Right. Now, even CNN wrote, the report found that the gun, a 45 Colt, 45 Long Colt caliber F- uh, two I Pieta single action revolver could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger <laughs> right. with the hammer cocked at the one quarter and one half positions. It also found that when the weapon was fully cocked, it could not be made to fire without a pull of the trigger while the working components were intact and functional. Now this is the part that the lawyers I think seizing on. FBI examiners observed an internal malfunction of the gun during testing at the fully cocked position with a re report noting portions of the trigger sear and cylinder stop fractured while the hammer was struck. Could be. Okay. Could be. Yeah, could be. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it got damaged when the right. real bullet fired too. Um, also, that taking it apart, handling it, banging it like we discussed, that the mm -hmm. cocked hammer a quarter and a half 
slots that I believe they were using some device to try to dislodge it, Eric, right? Just yes. to hit the firing pin. And that, you know, if you were using a hammer, let's say, to hit the hammer to see if it could dislodge, yeah. you could damage the gun. Sure. I mean, a fracture. I mean, it's a hard metal. It can be a crack. And I'm like, that doesn't prove anything. So they're running with some interesting um, quotes in there. But that's the boring scientific stuff. We got to get to the main course. We only have so much time in the day. Right, right. And that is, uh, let me see. You're Alec Baldwin. You've got to be interviewed by somebody respectable. Right. So how about a Como brother who's fired from CNN? Well, the name of his show, Douche on Douche, I think says a lot as to... Uh, That's what it is. <laughs> as to what his, each week, this douche is going to bring on a guest douche, and we're going to get this type of entertainment, which I found to be astronomically fantastic from a different angle. I, oh, I just couldn't stop laughing at this interview. It was, it was wonderful, Eric. Thank you for sending it. I had no idea. Where is this guy living in YouTube? He's got... Because... He, he has was, a YouTube he channel. Was pitching merchandise at the beginning of the show. Yes, yes. You're better at this than Cuomo is, and it looked like the same merch, only it had his logo on it. It had the bucket hat, and I think it had Oswald, the dog that he called Baldwin for some reason. I, Could it was be. a lot of the same merch, Eric. <laughs> What's funny, too, is if you watched his early presentation, I was surprised. It was like, hey, you've been watching Russell Brand. Or his I, I will make really another, similar. I will make another uh, challenge. I think Alec Baldwin has been watching us. Well, let's see if they come to that conclusion, too, okay. because he All brings right. up some interesting points. It's like, right. Out of the oh, blue, he comes wow. up. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to waste in this. Yeah. This, this is great. Now, but I didn't waste time. We don't want to watch the intro or anything else. The let's intro go. is insane. It's 20 minutes of him talking about being a free agent, like he's Derek Jeter or something. I don't I really oh, understand God. what he's yeah, talking well, about, but... Yeah, I, I, I ugh. okay, that, that one is like, that was painful. That was painful. But you got to wait to get to the gold. And that took about 18 minutes into the interview exactly. of himself. I mean, he's not interviewing anybody for 20 minutes. It's just him rambling on like Russell Brand. But this one, obviously, a retarded Russell Brand. <laughs> well, and he did have a little bit of preamble with the Baldwin that I skipped. Uh, I'm skipping over two. Well, we're, when he started we're, we're mentioning saying, the Greek Stoics doing? and Greek philosophy, I said, oh, no, this, God. Is, this is a bridge too far. <laughs> he had an image on the screen of like Aristotle at one point. Comparing yes. himself to the Greek Stoics. And I thought, this is a guy who's turned his back on his own religion, first of all. Because if you've got to go to the Greek Stoics and you're a Catholic, I think you're skipping a lot of people in between to get to the Greek Stoics. Hey, come on. we got to give him some credit. He is bigger than CNN+. Plus. Oh, okay. Right. All right. I don't know. Have you looked at his numbers? I don't know how many. How many? Well, uh, technically, he's still there. CNN Plus is down, but <laughs> we're oh, all bigger than CNN Plus. I see. Yeah. But his numbers are: he's got thirty-one thousand subscribers. Um, he's got more than we do. He has more than we do, but not more yeah, than I do. Uh, listen, hold on. I just gonna stop this show. Put up that subscriber button. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, look, yeah, that's this douchebag has more subs than that's we a, do. Good point. Good minutes. point, folks. You Come people on. disgust me. You really do. I'm <laughs> sick of you people. You're letting Chris Cuomo beat out. Think about all the videos, the hundreds of videos Hunley and I have made. This schmuck brings on Alec Baldwin and has more subs than you and I do. That's an outrage. It really it is. is. Hunley. Where's people that little ticket tape on the bottom you used to have? Uh, you had the, the ticket band? tape for yep, a while. Yep, 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 for locals, uh, folks. Look at this. <laughs> Read that, people, and think about your own lives at home, how you can help us. <laughs> Never mind thinking about yourselves. Chris Cuomo is beating us. Have some common decency at long last. <laughs> That's true. I mean, at least Ruff Russell Brand, we may gripe, but we respect Russell he's talented. Brand, I don't begrudge Russell Brand. He's a celebrity. He's very funny. You know, he's a movie star. But Chris Cuomo, to beat us that quickly, after, I mean, we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into these subs, honey. I agree. I agree. Yeah. They're not going to let us down. Don't worry. They okay. won't let us know. Well, we're being beaten by Hinkley on Twitter, so what difference does it make? Yesterday, well, Hinkley, look, look, we got, we got Hinkley put up his cat. Hinkley put John Hinkley put up his cat yesterday, Hunley. His cat was nowhere near as attractive or cute as the Hunley cat. No, it couldn't hold a candle. But he, being a presidential assassin, gets to put his cat on Twitter. I agree. I mean, hell, I mean, it's nowhere as cute as uh, as Oswald, obviously. Right. But I mean, between Hinkley and Cuomo, we're getting beaten by a failed presidential assassin, and a failed governor's brother. That's not good, Eric. Sure. 
You mean a failed governor's failed brother? A failed governor's failed brother turned free agent, <laughs> turned douche, turned weightlifter, turned steroid, turned COVID survivor who interviews Alec Baldwin in a couple of seconds. Yeah, and so let's get to it. Let's, let's get to it. Because here, here is the, the Larry King of the alternative universe. <laughs> I have one question that if you don't feel that you can clear it up now, you should at some point in the future. But then I want to talk to you about just processing and coping and enduring through this situation. The fact question is, in, uh, in a row... Again, look at that expression on Baldwin. That dude, is not a looks, happy dude. He looks like he's unhappy being there, first of all. And <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he does not look happy doing this interview. He knows this could go off the rails, I think, at any moment. Because he knows... His, his brother Billy is best friends with Chris, mm. right? I think so. He knows who Chris. He knows Chris Cuomo, and he knows that he is the younger brother of a you know a regular person in Andrew Cuomo. But he also knows Billy, and and he knows what kind of nut Billy is. So he's worried. Let me put it that way. He's worried, as he should be. Right. Earlier interview, you said I didn't pull the trigger. And there's all this stage direction about the hammer, which is obviously uh, a part of a revolver that people can look up for themselves, but that you pulled it back as the scene was. People can look up for themselves. <laughs> I can't help you, Chris. Chris, they have to look up for themselves. I can't really help you. I'm Alec Baldwin. I don't even know why I'm here. What's a hammer? What's a revolver? What's a hammer, Chris? Directed for you to do. You say you never pulled the trigger, but the gun went off. Right. You do the ABC interview, and it was kind of left there. That will right. not make sense to people. If a bullet comes out of a gun, they say, well, then someone fired You're it. You're familiar with your this did not come from me. This came from the DA's office themselves. You're familiar with what fanning a gun is. Have you heard of that phrase, fanning I've a never, gun? I've yes, never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know where I haven't heard it? I don't recall hearing fanning the gun from the DA's office. Do you? Right. He, he keeps saying the DA's, DA's office. They haven't said a word. No. And they did. They never said fanning. They did say they tested a piece of crap revolver that um, had issues on it that wasn't the same model or anything else. But right. I don't remember them ever saying fanning. Well, this is the first time he's embracing full throated <laughs> fanning. Oh, yeah. Which sounds like a deviant sexual situation, but that's not what I'm going for here. He is now desperately left. I mm -hmm. believe, Phys right, Eric? Oh, yeah. Anatomically, yeah. physically, and politically, and legally with fanning, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, which is just That's ridiculous. I mean, right, I, that was my takeaway. Because we discussed fanning in episode three, 312 of the Baldwin series. I think we uh, went over fanning at one point, right? And 13 and 14 and 16, and we right. had input we, we from uh, Seth of... Kenny about it, that it was right. functional. The fanning, <laughs> the fanning, just so we just start discuss fanning for one second, the fanning's possible if the uh, trigger is suppressed the entire time and you don't have these quarter and half inch locks. I think they would have to be seared off for the fanning to work. That's right. With, okay, just so the audience at home, I know we got a lot of gun nuts out there. That's why I'm not giving you my exact location. Nevertheless, I think fanning would have to take... Uh, uh, it's a um, modified weapon for it to right, effectively okay. work. You can... You on can this gun, not, not on every gun. I think well, on this gun, right. because it's got the quarter and a half inch locks. Right. Well, even this one, though, if you're holding the trigger back, you can pull the hammer back and release it if the trigger is pulled. But right. however you get it, the trigger has to be pulled. Either you pull it before or you or pull it pulled, after. Right. right. But it's got to be pulled. Right. So that's the... Um, that's the rub. And now he's screwed because he's like, uh, have you heard of fanning? Yeah. Well, he quickly switches the to the load, which we're going to see right now. He switches quickly to wh whoever oh, loaded yeah. the oh, yeah, yeah. the guilty party. So he gets off the trigger yeah. thing pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. It, it was like a, a non-answer. He didn't even explain how. He just said, have you heard of fanning? Right. That is what he calls a trigger alert, Hunley. But I feel triggered. I feel triggered by this. Okay. You're familiar with what fanning a gun is. Have you heard of that phrase, fanning a gun? Yes, but <laughs> explain really if you pull the hammer being a gun is. Have you heard of that phrase, fanning a gun? Yes, but I just love how he says it. Hold on. You heard You're of familiar that? With what fanning a gun is. Have you heard of that phrase, fanning a, a gun? Yes, my stupid younger explain brother. If you pull the hammer back, 
and you don't lock the hammer. If you pull the hammer back pretty far, in old Western movies, you'd see someone fan the hammer of the gun. The hammer didn't lock. You pulled it back to an extent where it would fire the bullet without you pulling the trigger, without you locking the hammer. The man who's the principal safety officer on the set of the film declared that the gun was safe when he handed it to me. The person who was the principal safety officer of the film declared in front of the entire assemblage with a loudspeaker gun. (laughs) Now, why did he say that? He's a douchebag. If he didn't know, if he hadn't checked. (laughs) The point is, all of us were told that everything was cool and you can relax and we're working with a gun that's safe to rehearse with. I'd like to hear a recording of that. (laughs) (laughs) See how quickly you get off and no explanation or anything else. And uh, of course, we brought up fanning before. Got to have a modified gun. He just forgets all those details. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's just fanning. You saw it in a Western. See, it's a gun you could fan it. It's automatic. Right. Right. There right, you know. genius. Right. Sure. But he's now going to shift gears to go blame all, unnamed Halls and Reed. Is that where he's going now? The two of them are now uh, uh, on his radar for blame for loading. Yep. He's an innocent bystander, handed a gun. And this is what I said the after, in this afternoon. When you play this clip, I'll say it afterwards again. But go on. Okay. And uh, folks, just so you know, I will keep pausing a lot. Some of this is so we don't get copyright claimed and slammed on this video. So we have to right. genuinely react, and that means lots of pauses. Okay, I like, that. I, I like this style. This is good for me as a professional. <laughs> but he explained it to me effectively that that's exactly what can happen if you pull a hammer back and let it go. If there's a live round, see, there's only one question to ask here. It can happen if you pull a hammer back. Well, who explained but it? He explained it to me effectively that that's exactly what can happen if you pull a hammer back and let it go. If there's a live round, see, there's only one question to ask here. Who put a live round in the gun? Now, that's some word salad because he, he was saying yeah. a cold gun, cold gun. He explained it. What, who, who, what are you saying? He gave you a safety briefing. Did he do that every time he handed you the gun? So Dave Hall said, Alec, just so you know, cold gun. And right, right. if you pull the tri- hammer back and the trigger, it's going to fire. I'm somehow, I don't think that conversation happened. You're right. I, I would love a, a recording of a recording this. of that. Yeah. But also the point of the matter is there are numerous exchanges in these scenes, this movie and other movies where the gun so you're not left holding the gun in between rehearsal takes. You give it back to Halls. You know what I mean, Eric? So Halls may not yell cold gun every single time he hands it back to Baldwin. Yeah, you know well, what I mean? I, like, he may say it. I, I, I wouldn't I mean, he may. Yeah, he I, may. I mean, that may would be not. a good standard really to, to yeah. say, you know, cold gun, blanks, uh, dummied up. or Because I, I talked to Seth about it. He said that, um, well, specifically it would be Hannah. That, that's Seth's contention, but it should be dummied up, cold, empty, or or hot, you know, like with blanks, I guess would be the term. I mean, I'd be getting the terms exactly right. Right, except different. during a rehearsal. Except yeah. or, they, what they're describing is during the shooting of the scene, mm-hmm. you would do this. I don't think having the cinematographer frame the, and I've said this in all the episodes, frame the trigger, frame the hammer, which is what she's trying to do. She's trying to get the the framing of her camera on certain ex- ECUs, extreme close-ups, that she mm-hmm. wants framed for uh, literally, like I said, on a bigger budget film, this would have been done uh, by someone else in post. You could take the gun, take a hand, and do this. And I mm-hmm. think, this is just my speculation, that the reason she was doing it was that this was a low-budget film and they were going to get these shots. And I think that he didn't like that. I think that he knows that the type of thing that she was doing is done in post-production, not post-production, oh, sure, but sure. post-shooting with a stand-in holding that gun. And she, awesome. is, she's trying to get this in the can because she knows that uh, this is a low-budget film and she wants to get those shots in. I don't think he liked that, to be honest with you, because that is right. not done with a star saying cock the gun for an extreme close-up when it could be done with uh, holes. After- with halls, yeah, it's been it's done halls or the stand-in or anybody mm-hmm. else, right? Exactly. I think also you know, Video Viva, Village Viva's was onto down. Something. Viva may be onto something, and I hate to give Viva credit for uh, something like this uh, coming from a non-gun culture up, up north. Mm-hmm. Now with his fishing pole in Boca Raton uh, being chased by alligators in episode five, but the point of the matter is, he may have been pissed off at her and fired the gun at her in a demonstration of anger, thinking it was a gun with blanks but 
pointing the trigger at her and then his uh, situation exploded in his face. Also, one more thing. She wasn't even supposed to be in there. Video Village was down. Right. So but she would have been monitoring. And ironically, uh, your guy, the one who quit, would have been the one in there. Because he was well, that's true, too. That's true, too. And if it wasn't for the COVID protocols, which is the new name of my memoir, the COVID protocols, Hannah, Hannah Reed would have been in there, but she was relegated to sector B of the non A list people who were supposed to be in uh, uh, category A. So if it wasn't for COVID, this thing might not have happened because Reed would have been allowed in the church, as some of you may recall from a previous episode. Mm -hmm. Very true. All right. That's it. There is no other question to ask. Do you have any suspicion that this could have been a setup? No, no. I think that in the beginning for me, there was a discussion about what was likely. Everybody focused on what's likely. Someone made it, someone was responsible for a horrible accident. And then as time went on, I began to entertain because of the insistence of the people involved. And I, again, I don't want to get into this detail now, but of the insistence of certain people that something else was afoot here, I was open-minded like for that for a couple of months. <laughs> okay, and was willing to explore right there, those I want to possibilities. Here. He is going to go down a track, which indicates to me that he's been watching our shows. Because this mm -hmm. comes out of left field. What he's about to say, folks, come, and I've never heard Baldwin discuss this in public, anywhere, at any time, in any place. Where he's going out of this looks like he's been binging on America's Untold Stories. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sure. You know what? You're right. He probably started with our whole Rust series. Right. And yes. he loves the show so much. Yes, he, he loved it himself. So he said, what else do they have? This is good, Dr. Right. Brinkley. This Elliot Smith episode is good. Mm -hmm. But now he's going to get into an area which he's never discussed before. And this is going to be fascinating. For a couple of months. And then after exhausting that possibility, private investigators, things that were, were, were information we access, we come back to what is likely. What is likely is that somebody who was responsible for one situation or one line of responsibility and the other person, it's like a tandem of the two people, one of them or both was negligent. But you believe for your own head in processing uh, how this became uh, your life, you don't think anybody was trying to put you in a situation where something terrible was going to happen. That requires so much. I mean, I am somebody who is perfectly comfortable with conspiracy theories well, that people want on, to get rid that, of. Really? You know, you're talking about Alec Baldwin comfortable mm -hmm. with the Trump world of conspiracy that he's been belittling for over four years. He is now embracing our world, Hunley, trying to get into our purview. This is a plot twist by Alec Baldwin in the world of Baldwin for the first time. Continue. Yep. Talking to the guy who, when I had a show on MSNBC, I did a two-hour, four-part uh, um, uh, memorial that was going to air literally. And it really? aired literally, it was scheduled to air on Friday, November 22nd, 19, uh, 2013. I've heard that The date. 50th anniversary of Kennedy's murder. What? And I had a feeble and very old, but nonetheless lucid Mark Lane on the show. That's a cheap shot. I had Jim Douglas, who wrote JFK and the Unspeakable. Disgusting. I had the guy whose last name is with an S, uh, uh, his, it's on the tip of my tongue, who wrote the New York Times bestseller about, <laughs> he was a New York Times reporter about the Warren Commission. And I had Bobby Kennedy Jr. come on, and he was the first member of the Kennedy family to say on the air that his family believed the Sapruder film was doctored. I had a two-hour, four-part program all about the conspiracy aspects of JFK's assassination, and what? NBC killed it. My, my producer at MSNBC mm. told me that the mothership across the street, NBC News, it, it, it does not tolerate. They completely support that Oswald is the killer, and they refuse to disseminate any information that okay, questions hold that. Hold it right theory. there. Hold on. Hold on. We're wow. now into we're now into Baldwin's take on the Warren Commission. This is a new area. We Hunley. Well, we inspired it though, because remember, of course we, we, did. we well, You said he was doing, describing the Zapruder film. We even mocked it up together. Right. The, the, mean, this the is, directions this is, for the choreography. He's been watching all of our Kennedy series, <laughs> and he's thinking, "How can I usurp this from these truth tellers?" And now we're supposed to believe that 
he had a show that never aired for four hours on NBC. Now, I know about this show. That's why I'm going to mention this, because Tom Brokaw is the host of the show. And Tom Brokaw interviewed Oliver Stone for two hours uh, for the 50th anniversary episode, which and aired 90 seconds of Oliver Stone in the, in the special after two hours or an hour and a half of interviewing Stone. Now, I don't know how Alec Baldwin would be selected to be the host of this, because when I think of JFK conspiracy, I don't think of Alec Baldwin. So, I mean, Tom Brokaw, I get, he's your anchor man for the NBC News. Uh, somebody must have looked at this, if this is true. He, I, I have to take him at his word that he sure. did interview these people. And somebody absolutely just canned the entire show. But now we're supposed to believe that the guy who has been denouncing conspiracies of Trump, quote unquote conspiracies, is now the leader of all conspiracies in the United States. Alec Baldwin, which you're going to see these two douchebags battle to the death to try to move to the populist right. And this is what I've been laughing about all morning, watching these two guys leave the Democratic Party, which you're going to see now, and come up as close as humanly possible to Trump, Jimmy Dore, Max Blumenthal, Matt Taibbi. Even uh, Russell uh, Brand. Russell He's Brand, really Glenn right, Greenwald, but... <laughs> Snowden, but only move one inch away from the Democratic Party. These guys are stuck in their own bubble political world of uh, not populists, but what I call douchealists, which will now <laughs> I just made that up. Dueling that. douchealists. <laughs> totally douchealists. <laughs> but watch where this goes, because you're going to see an interesting segment where they try to outdouche each other as to who's further, further from the Democratic Party at this point, which I, I, there literally is no separation between between Alec Baldwin and the Democratic Party. However, he knows when a house is on fire, Baldwin. He knows <laughs> when to jump out of a sinking ship. And and what Chris Cuomo is saying, I've already jumped out of that ship and you better get out because the whole shitstorm's going up in flames November 7th. Go ahead. <laughs> Oswald was the lone killer and they don't want to hear one. And they canceled my show. Mm -hmm. And in its place, put some kind of Tom Brokaw you know, bowl of oatmeal with the boots in the reverse in the stirrups and JFK Jr. saluting and a, just a very, uh, you know, sappy commemorative program. But it led you to believe that there could be an alternative explanation. Oh, I, well, I mean, I uh, when I was a kid uh, back in a time when journalism was 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 probably uh, still controlled and certain by certain powers and influenced by certain powers, but nowhere near what it is now. I went to a 7-Eleven as a boy mm, and on scary. a spinning rack of magazines was a me. journal about JFK's assassination. Uh, it could have been based on Robert Sam Anson's book, They've Killed the President. And in it, they had Oswald's autopsy photos. I mean, this was at a 7-Eleven. Yeah. Right. No, it That's was at like Long Island in 19 something <laughs> when I was like 10 years old. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think sometimes... Not always. You look at something and you say, it looks that way because it is that way. And it's just very common sense. Mm -hmm. And to me, Kennedy's assassination is a very common sense thing. There's yeah. no way Oswald should put squeeze no. off three shots and had two hits from that window. I told, exactly. I told Larry that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, I mean, we're going to have to have Baldwin on as a guest. Oh, I think we should. To, Absolutely. Yeah, to talk we about some of the... The finite, the finer uh, elements of the Kennedy assassination, because clearly he's been studying this in a 7-Eleven since the age of 10 in Massapequa, Long Island. Yeah, and you know the area. <laughs> so I, I used to go to that 7-Eleven. I know exactly. <laughs> you I, found I know the what, same magazine. I never saw any Oswald <laughs> photos of that 7-Eleven. He apparently knew that they were selling Robert Anson's book there for some reason. He took the last copy, Mark, before you could get it. I didn't know they were selling autopsy books at the 7-Eleven, but Baldwin must have stolen them all, this, this guy. <laughs> I love it. That's oh, a gift that keeps on giving. Oh, my God. So... Back to you. Anyway, <laughs> back to you for a second, and we'll go on. When you did uh, the interview with ABC, we have a lot of friends in common mm -hmm. uh, and family. Mm -hmm. um, AOC. I was not in favor of you doing it because right. I thought it was too soon and you were going to get beat up. I, I remember that. Uh, it was early on. I think we briefly mentioned it that, you know, Chris Como was advising Alec Baldwin. Oh, on the side. right. 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 Yeah, on I TV, right. On his show. 
Uh, well, and apparently on the side too. I mean, the their side, families, right, right. The, uh, they know each other. Right. Up for it. That happened to a certain extent, but I think the bigger concern, and what I want to want to know for this audience is, what are your lawyers saying to you, even if this is ruled an accident and everybody who's in power acknowledges that Alec Baldwin had had no criminal responsibility for this or tragic civil. death, yeah. or civil. but you are a producer on the film and well, something well, well, can well. be an accident Hold on, Chris. that Hold on. is held as a liability of the producers and you well, it are depends on what It depends on what grade of producer what you is, are. Is. There are managerial producers who raise the money and right. spend the money and hire people. And there are creative producer. producers who come in and the <laughs> only authorities they have are over script casting. Sexy that's producer. But you're getting into. sued just the same. Well, the production's getting sued and I'm one of the five producers that is named in the lawsuit. So, I mean, and we're all indemnified by an insurance policy. There's a lot I can say about that. In Mutual of Dusha. Who did what <laughs> to try to uh, craft settlements? And things. By the way, folks, uh, he, he does a lot of that. Did you notice, Mark? There's a lot I can say and a lot we're going to say and uh, right. I want to say and it's like. Where's okay. he going to say this? If he hasn't said, how many more hours of TV is this guy going to chew up? Well, maybe he's uh, he, maybe he's billing the next interview right here. He's like, "Hey, I got more to say. Come on, okay. Oh, well, have me on. Possible. I got more that's to possible. say. That's possible. <laughs> I like hey, this. There's a very complex. Huh? I like the rig he's got set up. Is this for his live Instagram show that he does? I mean, uh... Uh, could be. At least he's not laying with his hair going. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> I'm waiting any second for that door to open and 22 kids to come running through that door. Well, I can't get um, uh, Dunnigan out of my mind, and I'm waiting for Laria. <laughs> oh, is he doing, he's doing uh, the wife now? Oh, yeah, well, he has a doll. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I got to check that out. I got to check that out. All right, let's roll here. Let's see what we got. Next web of stuff that was going on in the, in the months after that. My, my impulse was, I mean, if you want to say something about me that's true, I'm not going to stop someone from doing that. No. I mean, I'm not going to no, complain about know? that. If I yeah. earned it, like this yeah. guy that said I punched him over a parking space in front of my building, and there's six cameras in front of my building, and all of them and a Zapruder film. Everything he said, <laughs> you know. So when we we made that go away because he lied. The guy yeah. lied, and yeah. we had it on film that he lied. Yeah. But he, but, but again, like people. Uh, on film, you mean like film. when we saw you pulling the trigger with, on yeah. the film with the thing that we we left long behind? <laughs> what does it have to do with uh, the Rust film? I don't understand. He's now talking um, about. It. I don't know. I don't know. He, he punched a lot of people in the face, and one of them made it up. Okay, I'm with you. Eric. Let's go. I'm with you. Uh, much more than I was prepared to accept. People want money. They want oh. money. Well, and they want to go after you, especially the New York Post. But just to button <laughs> this up, and then I want to move on. The idea is that you believe that as a producer, you're not going to have any liability because you're a different type of producer than other producers who are on the film? Believe, no, that's a fact. I mean, there are people who are managerial producers. They're responsible for who gets hired, who doesn't get hired. You know, I mean, for example, the the, the person who was the principal, uh, what they call the armor or mentor, this guy, Seth Kenny, he... Telephone call for Seth Kenny. Telephone, Seth Kenny. Yep. He, and Seth, um, I can tell you, loves the term armor mentor. He does? He, uh, boy, no. that's going to make his head explode. <laughs> I think yeah, he's yeah. slandering <laughs> Seth Kenny. I would interpret this to be defamation and slander of one of the great, great ammo guys in the business, a legend. And let's just say that uh, Seth Kenny um, did send, or his legal team did send a lawyer to the uh, LA Times saying to cease and desist specifically yeah. for the term armor or mentor yes he doesn't yes. seem He's to like that intentionally using that term baldwin <laughs> to stick it to seth i think mm -hmm. wow well you know he's got to spread the wealth he can't just go after halls he can't just go after hannah we got to look out a little bit more and uh mm -hmm. yep um whoop nutty or Artie Noobs is saying it, producer. So he's, he's spreading the blame. Let me, let me just add one thing. He may uh, <laughs> use the definition of producer in the physics of a movie, but there's no legal definitions of producers that he's describing. You know what I mean? He's using that in the terms mm. of filmmaking. That doesn't apply in court. You know what I mean? They're all producers on this film. And he gets a is, check. He gets the cut of it, so he's a producer. It's a good right. Line. He's got a back end on this. Don't forget, his company was one of the shell companies that was being mm -hmm. used 
as a uh, tax liability comp company. And, you know, he could say that these other producers did different things, but you're just dividing up the work. You're mm -hmm. dividing up the work. If he's working on the script and she's working on hiring, he's still a producer. They're just divvying up the, the workload. Yeah, it's like all the shareholders at a, a corporation. The corporation screws them, screws you over. Well, they're paying it out, and all of our shares take the hit. Right. So, yeah, he's part owner. He principal, uh, what they call the armorer mentor, this guy, Seth Kenny. The person who was the principal, uh, what they call the armorer mentor, this guy, Ooh, Seth Kenny. The wow. person who was the principal, uh, what they call the <laughs> armorer mentor, mentor, this guy, <laughs> Seth Kenny. I don't know. I just figured he likes hearing that. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh like He got it. dragged into this mess. <laughs> He completely endorsed her being hired as the armorer. You know, there was, no one uh, came to the production, uh, even though this doesn't it. pertain to me and my responsibilities. No. Nobody came to the production and said, don't hire her. No, she was somebody hired. Said, hire union. her. The no complaint. No, no one came <laughs> to the producers. Said, hire her. Said, the producers are... <laughs> Nobody <laughs> said, don't hire her. They didn't say, don't hire Alec Baldwin either. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I mean, this, this reverse logic is absurd. It, it, yeah, it's one of those. It's not my fault. It's really her fault. It's, it's her fault. It's not my fault that she's uh, working on the she, film because she, it's she, somebody no, no, else's it's so fault. Funny. He is blaming a guy who recommended a girl for a shoot that everybody said, okay, we're vetted her. We're going to hire her. He's blaming the guy who wrote the recommendation. What a stretch. Mm -hmm. What a stretch! And who's friends with her father? Obviously, her father being a legend in the business, and um, she was in the union. And she obviously, you know, according to my sources, uh, worked on other films quite well. Yep. And good point. If AB wasn't hired, no one would be dead. That's true. That's true. I'll be in <laughs> Little Rock next, discussing that in Little Rock. Blameless for that. I will say, even though I have my issues with them, the producers are not people who um, uh, were warned not to hire. Do you think they, they that didn't... the producers had reason to know that there were screwed up things happening on that set, that there could be danger? No, 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 no. no. This is what I love. I, and I've got to give Como a little bit of credit. Yeah, that, was, me, that was good. That was good. He, that was he, good. he is trying to um, hurt you know, him in or whatever. Hurt him in, yeah. Hurt him in. Um, yeah. and, and right there. Because you could see and Bob, but the, 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 and well, these, these, to, first of all, these questions are written by his producers who want to make news and put this. This mm -hmm. keep in mind, this is a guy who went from CNN primetime to now uh, teleprompter opening, opening for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this guy's had a fall from grace, and I think he took one or two of those producers with him, I'd imagine, and they're oh, writing sure. these questions. They'd like to make some news with these questions, I presume. Well, I, I'm going to guess, and again, I don't know for sure, but. A lot of times when they fire a talent, they fire everyone. Yeah, they, I think and everyone. Say, and he, he can't pay their salaries, but he may have taken an associate producer probably with him to do this cockamamie uh, YouTube show. For sure. Actually, he spent some time talking about, I've got somebody in the back who is smarter than me. Blah, 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 oh, blah, he blah. brings that. We see that guy in a little yeah, while. Exactly. Right? Because oh, that guy, that's, that's worse than the guy Jimmy Dore has, who's a legitimate comic. Whoever mm -hmm. this guy is. Uh, wow, this yeah. guy's great. Yep, yeah. and that's already gone by. I'm, I'm not going to oh, go oh, through. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Know that there were screwed up things happening on that set, that there could be danger. Uh, <laughs> that's a much more in involved question that I don't want to get into now again because it speaks to the, some of the issues I'm going to address later on. But the later bottom line is, is that there are people I spoke to who I admire and respect, and I said to them, did you think that this was an unsafe set? And they said no. And I had no experience myself when I was there that it was an unsafe set ever Except until the guy that came moment to you until... and said it was unsafe the night before. The exactly. And, and other than that one piece of evidence that the guy literally came to you, the head of the camera department and said, this is the most unsafe set I've ever been on in my life. You got to save me from this. Uh, apparently that's of no meaning to him. Oh yeah. Well, and, and look, he's trying to the line here. It's like the first thing, Oh, it's anybody but me, everybody but me. Oh, so it's an unsafe set. Well, oh, shit. I could be responsible for that. I'm producer. Right. I mean, and you can just hear so, it's like, it's oh, so brazen and so obvious what he's doing. He's just not a good lawyer for himself. Each, it, the only way this stuff would work would be if he was sitting in all of the 10 million interviews he gave with his lawyer who interrupted like a normal person. But his, but ego not Bowles. Is, 
<laughs> What's that? <laughs> but not Reed's lawyer. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, definitely not Reed's lawyer. Reed's lawyer, you know, owned part of the Xanax Corporation. But the, 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 if he had his lawyer saying, well, we'll answer that at another time, Alec, uh, you know, but no, he plays lawyer and Baldwin in every episode he's on. It's almost like he's in a two, a two man play. I'm playing two characters in this. I will be playing my lawyer and I'll be playing the legend, Alec Baldwin, in this two part miniseries, Baldwin the Man. Baldwin, the lawyer. Baldwin or, lawyer. Or Baldwin Esquire. Right. I had a feeble, disabled Mark Lane at the end of his life. I did the best I could. <laughs> well, that day that happened, when someone, when someone handed me a, a, a prop weapon and told me this is safe to use, they made prop weapon like that. <laughs> right. But play this a little inch more because I wanted to mention did that this. declaration. Okay. Now, what would what, what in the world of alternatives, what might have happened if he never said anything? But that's not the case. Okay, okay, okay. if you go back to where the prop weapon was, um, just play that little part safe there. to use. They made that declaration. Now, what would what, what in the world of alternatives, what might have happened if he never said anything? Okay, but that's not the case. I, I just want to interject in here with, because he he now goes into this safety issue that he's never had a problem in his life. And the only reason we know that this is a problem is because of some minor character uh, named George Clooney, who said that he checks the gate on every single cylinder of every gun every time he goes to fire it. Now, that's why Alec Baldwin is in trouble, because a man of equal stature in his own industry has said he does the opposite of what Alec Baldwin didn't do. That's mm -hmm. why this is of interest in the case, because if, if George Clooney said, I check it and I am essentially Alec Baldwin, then Alec Baldwin has a safety problem. I just wanted to put that. Not in. only him, but uh, I think they showed Will Smith. Yes. Checking yeah. and tearing it down. Yes. Uh, now, you know, his hand is dangerous, but he's OK with a gun. Right. He's a slapper, not a shooter, it says exactly. on, the, on his, the top of his call sheet. Exactly. So um, that was the help. And then there's. Baldwin's past. Now you could say that he never talked to his father ever, but the fact that his dad taught the freaking rifle team. He never is, mentions that. He never mentions that. His I wonder dad, why. I know. His dad came home with rifles slung over his shoulder every night. He'd make he'd shoot at the kids if they didn't take out the garbage. I mean, he had this brick building that killed him because it was filled with gunpowder smoke mm -hmm. and he died, and in his lungs was uh gunpowder residue. And then he went to sue Massapequa High School, his alma mater, and they destroyed the building, not unlike a place in Connecticut that would happen years later, where a shooting uh, in a school where the building was demolished. And I said this to Barnes uh, about a year ago when we brought this up the first time, that this lawsuit, to head it off, uh, Massapequa High School destroyed that brick shooting building in back of the high school, which mm -hmm. I found to be... Uh, probably on orders from the lawyer and directly across Long Island Sound in Connecticut, a high school shooting will then lead to the demolishing of that high school, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. With the way we live our lives right now, no one's following them around with the camera all day, are they? Right. Which is not true, technically, because there are pictures. I remember of uh, Hannah. I yeah, well, Hannah, Hannah was stalked repeatedly in, in that little house she had. She had a flea. Did that, and then they 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 followed her to a tattoo shop, or they were saying Hannah oh, got a new that. job at the tattoo shop, and oh, oh, wow. and they came out because she was in there for hours. So, yeah, I'd say no. They actually were. Dave Hall's is smart enough to probably say. If this the, guy went out to got the paper one day and there was no paparazzi, he called him on the phone and say, "What's going on? Where'd yeah. you go?" He'd have a heart attack if there was no paparazzi. He would think his career was over. This guy lives, breathes, and eats paparazzi all day long. You know what I mean? I mean, his wife just runs out there with plastic bellies on, with kids in carriages. <laughs> I mean, she, she, you know, I mean, these people have to have paparazzi. But he hates them. He really hates them. Well, that's the game, right? It's like, hey, I'm going to be uh, going to dinner at uh, 6 o'clock and such and such and such. And then, you son of a bitches, you'll just stalk me forever.
it's like a routine. Well, I mean, they, they have these guys on the payroll, like Dorman and stuff, who say he's coming down now. There's a whole network in New York of how this is done. You know what I mean? There's spotters, there's TMZ, there's people who pay these doormen and, you know, say he calls down for a car. So they, they come, you know, quickly to coalesce around the building to get these shots. But he apparently doesn't like it because they come too close to him. He doesn't mind if they're, uh, if it's the Sapruta film. <laughs> But if they get up in his grill, that's where they, he, he draws a line. Yep. Right. No one's following the armorer or the first AD around with the camera all day long saying, well, what happened? What happened? What happened? Well, arguably, the reason this has taken so long to reach a legal conclusion on the responsibility side, liability, civil litigation is something else. It's often more protracted. I think if it's not Alec Baldwin involved, we get answers sooner. Well, yeah. all, all yeah, of that's that true. remains to be that seen. There's true. nothing. I mean, the fact that this has taken so long has been uh, quite, quite troublesome to me, and, and we're going to address that as well. Once the, uh, uh, I mean, that. listen. If address you make an announcement, that. this was made clear to me by my lawyer. If you make an announcement that you want them to step on the gas and hurry things up, that's only going to slow them down. Right. DAs because and, and prosecutors don't nice want to be told by this. people who are the, potentially the subject of their investigation what to do. I mean, my lawyer said to me, if you prod them, if you push them, if you go public and say, what the fuck is the problem here, whoa, then whoa, that's whoa, not going to help you at all. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And then they. Yeah, exactly. You know, you are you really are just are you're patiently waiting and yeah. you're patiently waiting to give your phone when they ask for yeah, it and patiently waiting. Yeah. You know, because you don't want to prod them too much. So right. you're just going to withhold evidence and make them ask you a lot of times and threaten you because you're helping. You're helping the process. Is, is that how it works? Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, you have to wonder also about the uh, Soros back DA in Santa Fe. Um, she's between a rock and a hard place here. If she clears him, uh, she'll be unelected or recalled. And um, uh, if she doesn't clear him, um, you know, I mean, she's in a tough spot. She's in a tough spot. I, I think she's trying to delay delay of game is really what I'm looking at here. To use a football analogy. She's trying to run out the clock, maybe on her own term at this point. You well, know, that's they, a, that's a question, too. Is she up for reelection? I don't know. But there's something about November 7th that she's waiting for. And I don't know if it's her own reelection or election or maybe she wants to get another job or there's something going on there that we're going to have to look into after the show, Eric, to see what her political status is. We, I haven't looked at it in a while, uh, but I'd like to see what her status is because as you have pointed out, the sheriff has had it with her. I mean, the sheriff just wants to move on from this cockamamie story already, and he's done everything he can to uh, uh, move this along, the sheriff, you know. So, I think that they deliberately leaked this. I, that's my I, opinion. I, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably the, right. The sheriff's department let the FBI report get out there. Right. Because the DA has already said, if I recall, the office is saying, oh, well, yeah, we got to turn it over to the medical examiner and, you know, we'll let them go through. It's like, Sounds like November 7th is some sort of a time frame for her. I don't know why other than. Um, she wants to have the anniversary, Mark. She wants to have the anniversary. It could be the anniversary. There was a, a president. Who, I think, right? There was a president who left Afghanistan over some cockamamie anniversary. And how did that go? Good point. Right. Yeah. Let's see what he's got here. The announcement is going to come about who is or isn't going to be charged. I mean, I have a lot of opinions about that. But but come let, on, me, let me just say this, which is yeah. that we come down to a point where it's just like uh, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. Now, this is something which was something that was to the delight of people who hate my guts politically. Trump okay. went on TV and said he thinks I did it on purpose. Wait, 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 wait. What is I wouldn't Trump rule it out, he said, because he did it on. His son made T-shirts <laughs> yeah. that yeah. they sold it's on there. a website. You call that surreal. How is it surreal? It's absolutely our reality. I can't believe you oh, were no, surprised. It is. The entire <laughs> nation has ridiculed this guy. And yes. he makes picks out Trump as, again, his arch nemesis foil. Trump is up in this guy's head as only Trump can do. Yeah, he's living rent-free for sure. Right. Yeah, cured of that. I, I've been cured of that observation. You know, this was this wonderful opportunity for these people to, you know, maybe like, like in my case, you're not going to find any child pornography on my computer. What? The things that they read. As opposed to who? 
as opposed to Anthony Weiner, uh, Uma Abedin's husband, the New York congressman. Um, well, as opposed to a certain Hillary president's, Clinton, a current president's son? Or, or Joe Biden, the son of the president? I, who is he referring to? I, mean, I don't know. I'm confused by that. Let's take a look at that computer. Maybe there's something on there we don't know about. Yeah, and it's like, well, where did you get to that? I mean, how did we get from this, Dude, that this was some set accident to, oh, wow. That was um, a nice segue. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Hmm that they're hunting for that they want yeah they're they're they're, they're, they're desperate for you know right. uh, in the in the united states obviously sexual scandal overwhelms everything they love that here they love to condemn people for that and so forth but what i realize is is that as i've said in the past if if george bush's mother if barbara bush fell through the ice on a pond oh yes folks okay uh got a pause so we can hear this whole thing this, this is, is crazy a, this, this is, is a... funny. this is so insane i i, I yes. skipped the, i skipped by accident i thought this actually happened when i first watched this and that he i don't want to give it away but i i skipped no. that little part and i thought when did this happen to Barbara Bush? I know she had thyroid problems, but I didn't know she was skating on thin ice and <laughs> fell through into yes. the water. I never heard this. Uh, oh, oh, the- don't worry. It is it is a very colorful, specific Dude, story I mean, coming up. How do you come up? I have a wild imagination, right? I couldn't come up with this on acid. And here he is on a live show coming up with this insane tangential idea to make his case. It's this is beautiful, and I, I had to pause. You got to hand it to him. This guy is, let me tell you, he is the master <laughs> of surreal bullshit. The master, not just bullshit, surreal bullshit. It's a, it's a separate category. You could have had him on the staff on, at Lampoon, dude. This guy could. I mean, we missed our mark. We should have had Baldwin on there from the beginning. I couldn't come up with this. You know, this would be a Lampoon, uh, like a long form story. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we we've kept him waiting. Let's see. George Bush's mother, if Barbara Bush fell through the ice on a pond and I waded out into the pond and saved her life, they'd say I groped her sexually (laughs) when I was pulling her out of the ice. I groped her. I squeezed her breasts while I was pulling her out of the ice pond. First of all, thank you for that image. Uh, right. Second, uh, would that be before or after you pushed her through the ice in the park? Well, right, right. Well, then, you, then you then you you're, you're more uh, uh, um, wise than I than I'll ever be. But my point is, it just so freaking specific on that. Did you? I mean, think okay. about that. It's like just, it's one thing to say that if I saved somebody, they would say it was harassment. No, he went into detail. But just just take the reverse. Imagine if he instead of Barbara Bush, which is a punching bag or punchline to his sure. show. Who was recently deceased? He mm-hmm. chose Madeline Albright. How good would that joke be? Oh yeah, think about that one. Oh, he doesn't even hilarious. know. He doesn't even understand how how one sided he is politically. He just cannot possibly bridge that gap in even storytelling surreal ideas. That's how crazy he is as a mad dog yellow Democrat. And I mean that's disgusting. I can't. I can't think of the hardest core right winger ever writing or coming up well, with that. I mean, he, he, he could have used know? Trump's recently deceased wife, but I. I think he realized that even that was a bridge too far. God only knows. Instead, pick on an old lady who just died and is right. pretty beloved by some people. By mo- by most America, by the way. Yeah, I mean. It doesn't matter what you do. The ones that are out to get you are out to get you, and in this case, uh, not even so much that kind of trash press i mean anything murdoch and anything post i mean who it's the same thing by the way uh yeah well by the way we're we're, we're supposed to be talking about a set shooting here right uh, well, we've gone for He's the talking session. about this one publication in a sea of democratic leftist publications in america and he cannot let it go that there's one publication the new york post that goes after him in new york it just drives him insane because he wants a complete 100 percent support of the media and he can't get it because of Murdoch and the Post. Yeah, uh, I used to think that the, the 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 Post was something that cops and firemen and doormen read for the sports page. Because let's face it, the, mm-hmm. the Post has a pretty good sports page and a great and regular the paper. That vomit that constitutes the Post. I thought, who reads this? But I was surprised we to learn some of the people over the years <laughs> who read the Post, especially now that it's all digital. But look, all of this aside, and, and I do want to talk about it a little bit more in terms of uh, how quickly you returned to all digital 
kind of like you, Chris Como. Oh, good point, Hunley. Oh, digital Chris. Whoa. I mean, I don't see. Is he on a network somewhere? Did I miss something? something? Did the New York Times increase their subscription base by going digital, Eric? <laughs> God only knows. What a ridiculous statement. Your public uh, life in terms of taking on tough issues and making yourself a target. But, you know, when I reached out at the time, I just, I felt so uh, horribly about what you and the family and obviously um, the, your, the filmmaker uh, who lost her life. What's her name? Uh, that processing and that pain, I felt so badly for you and for everybody involved. Right. How hard has this been for you and Ilaria and the older kids? What you hit on is the... Here we go. So we're, uh, I started, it was about 18 minutes and change in. We're at 32 minutes in, folks. So at 32 minutes in, now Alec has been given a cue. So Alec, right now, it's a good time to be human or pretend. Right. right. Is the most important thing. And I'm not just saying this to be polite or what have you, or yeah. to dress this up a certain way. It, it is everyone that was there that day walked around confused. Confusion was what reigned that day because what happened and what actually we learned happened was just not even in the realm of possibility. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. He hasn't got to it yet. Sorry, I gave him more right. credit. We got another right. minute or so. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even possible. You know, we thought somebody fainted. We thought whatever. So to focus on one thing, which is the, 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 tr the real tragedy, I'm not the victim here. No matter how much people say, or oh, the post and this and that. I'm not the victim here. But things for me are going to get better. Things for me are going to get cleared up. I'm, I have, I'm a thousand percent confident about that. And nothing's going to bring this woman back. She died. Right. She was a little boy. You know. yeah. So 3254, he actually stated. And did I hear her name yet? Did you? Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. Hmm. No, um, I, I, I have a whole raft of comments about that later on, but oh, a raft of comments, raft of comments, like a floating hold raft. On, let, me, let, let me go back. Oh, wait, hold on. Things for me are going to get better. Things really? for me are going to get cleared up. I'm, I have, I'm a thousand percent confident about that. And nothing's going to bring this woman back. She died. Right. This woman, she's a little boy. You know, um, I, I, I have a whole raft of comments about that later on, but about the boy. Well, oh, you got a bunch of comments. The boy, oh, yeah, the boy ended oh. up on my computer. Oh. The idea being that th this is the real tragedy. And when you turn around, to me, the only significant thing, you, everything we've said doesn't matter. Me, my positioning, the press, my wanting to reach out to an audience and say, I hope you understand how this works, that I mean, that, that there were safety protocols. Why would anybody believe that I worked in this business for 40 years okay. and that day I decided to play with a gun? That's the George dumbest Clooney. thing I've ever heard. George Clooney. George Clooney. Clooney. People, I, I've worked in this business for years and with cars, stunts, weaponry, whatever. I've never had one incident. If there he's, he's managed to get right by that name, too. So Right. He, he, yeah, he know, doesn't you know. seem to manage to talk about George Clooney disagreeing with him 100% on the safety issue of a gun or Will Smith or many other actors, for that matter, of checking the cylinder before you um, shoot the gun. He seems to be above all that. Yep. And by the way, um, did I, I listened to this whole thing earlier. Mark, you listened to the whole thing earlier, too, I believe. Did you hear her name out of his well, mouth? Well, I, I couldn't. I made it about three quarters of the way through. I didn't. I had to. Um, okay. I throw, don't I think he said it. I, I don't think not, he said it. If you went through the whole thing, I don't, I don't remember her, him saying it again. But this is not the only interview where he never mentions her name, right, Eric? This, this seems to be a pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this woman, you know, some in Mars full goes that, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, other ones, he, he usually kind of ekes it out at some point. It might come out, but he definitely, definitely avoids it. And this one, I don't think he said it at all. At all. So, good times. Um, so, we got this. I need to skip to the hour point because we go around and around and around and I think Como invited him to leave the Democratic Party. Oh, yeah, that's the part I wanted to see. Yeah, that's great. That's freaking great. I'm not sure where that was. Exactly. I gave you like a little hashtag for that, if you remember. Um, Do we have I'll, time? I'll, I'll, I'll look on my phone. Oh, yeah, you sent to me earlier. I did. I, 36 I minutes in. Um, 
Yeah, so right. Thirty-six. Yep, I know where it was. Only thirty-six. Um, here we 36, go. Thirty-six. Right here. Eric. You are saying exactly what my friends who reject the right and the left, mm -hmm. uh, who consider themselves free agents or sometimes independents, although I don't like that word. Um, if you believe all these things, mm -hmm. why don't you have more common ground with? people who aren't in the Democratic Party. And why are you a Democrat Ooh. if you believe Ooh. that they're part yeah. of a system that's basically a kleptocracy? Because I've been anesthetized in recent Ooh. years into believing what the Democrats have said, which is that wow. and they're right. Hold on, Eric. That's a great line. I've been are. anesthetized to what the Democrats have said. That's one of the key takeaways of this entire interview, folks, because every one of us who've moved from the left to the right including myself and Viva and all these other guys, have said the same exact line. Is he going to vote for Trump now in 2024? Dude, <laughs> <laughs> do you want him to hang out with you? I mean, I know I you have hung out with him. I, don't <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just like, oh, if God. he comes over, sure, we'll embrace him, right? That's your philosophy, Eric, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Democrat have said, which is that, and they're right, which is how much worse it would be if the Republicans are in power. I mean, I'm somebody who believes that we need to have there. term limits. And I've been a huge proponent and I've worked for many, many years, going back to the 90s about campaign finance reform. And I've always wanted there to be and, and so obviously Citizens, Citizens United put the uh, the, the re Eric, most recent stake in the heart of that. Really quickly, how much did Hillary Clinton outspend Trump in that campaign? Was it 8 to 1 or 12 to 1? I don't even remember. I, I will put. I will say though that Trump did get the free press that because they couldn't stop talking about him. That right. I'm just talking about mitigated. sheer Democratic money spent sure. in a campaign. I think she outspent him something like eight to one or some. I'm gonna have to look into the actual number, but Little Rock is saying twelve to one. I've heard twelve to one, right? Yeah, I mean that's very very possible. But I, right. I just, I, but to be intellectually honest, I I want to you know acknowledge that there was that mitigation of. Trump's name being out there. No, 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 no. But he, um, he's talking about Citizens United. Oh, sure. That's sure, why sure. I'm bringing yeah. that up. He's oh, yeah. talking about something that drove a stake into fundraising for his people. He's claiming he's mm -hmm. claiming that Citizens United, which has been completely disparaged in terms of spending oh, yeah. campaign. So he's now living in the 90s. And my whole uh, take on this guy is he's living in the 90s in general, mm -hmm. politically, politically. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. And he's a and so is Rob Reiner. And so are all these other douches. They just went to sleep in 1990 during Clinton. And they believe nothing happened after Bill Clinton or during Bill Clinton. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, Ken Dinelli. There you go. Information and spent over two two billion dollars. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. That's what I need you for. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> Chris, 25 or six to four. That's funny. That's now that's a great line. Nobody's gonna get that one. Wow. Very All good. right, you win the show. Wow. Right, no. Tell him what he's won, Bob. But I have been working on behalf of campaign finance reform in the state of Arizona, in the state of Massachusetts, in the state of Maine, New York City campaign. Right, I'm gonna get back to, to yeah, yeah. Russ. I hope. Let me see. It's right around an that hour. Part where, he, where he says, "Walk away from just walk away." Oh God, I don't know what that. That's the that's the one I just gave you that little segment there. No, for, for many many. This this is the, the segment he said necessize. That's what you sent me. Thirty six. Oh right. Okay. There was one where he said. Oh, there we go. Thirty eight. Got it. Hold on. The hell am I doing, with you, Hanley? Come on, let's go. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that well it would be so much worse if the Republicans um, were in charge than the Democrats. Well, that was the theory of the case most recently in getting rid of Trump, mm -hmm. but. Do you really believe that the Democrats have shown that when they're in power, America is a sweeter, stronger place? Ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm not following your question, but I'll tell it you what I do. It was a pretty great question. Leave party, <laughs> question mark, is the question. But I'll tell you what I do leave believe. Leave the which party. Is that, wow. Play, play that a couple more times. This is, this is the poll quote. Of the leave leave the, the party, that. question mark, is the question. Or should I leave the party? Yeah. Oh, so does, does being a member of the party mean I march in lockstep with every word that comes out of their mouths? People who are raising yeah, money for the campaign. But very often it seems to. Right? Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I'm not really concerned about that. I mean, I, I, no, I'm a Democrat course. because of a tradition. There's a tradition of, of democratic politics that I believe in. Lately, 
Mm -hmm. Lately, I'm not so sure. I mean, I, I'm 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 somebody who I'm not going to I'm not going to assign blame. Squirming. But I I, I mm -hmm. would say, and I'd like an Squirming. explanation. And I'm sure I'm, I'm nobody owes me an explanation. I don't expect an explanation. But the fact that Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton that they ran that anemic a campaign that horrified me. Two billion dollars. Absolutely speechless. No, he's actually acknowledging that Donald Trump ran the anemic campaign. Right. And it still beat Hillary with right, the $2 billion. Right, it wasn't billion. an anemic campaign because it had all the working class people who used to be Democrats voting for him. <laughs> His description of anemic and the other side's description is, is night and day. She ran an anemic campaign, literally spending money like water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the, okay. The part, and I don't even remember where he said, but I, I will... I, I pointed it out to you. At one point, Baldwin actually says flyover country. Oh, yeah, we got to get to that. We, that's uh, one of the great lines of this. This, I mean, there's so many great takeaways from this interview. I mean, it's gold. It really is gold. Oh, it's a, I was I, I was in a fog for days. I couldn't believe drinking heavily. That Donald Trump, who everybody in New York was on a beach. On. Here it is. Here it is. I don't care what Mark Burnett did. I, mean, I blame Mark Burnett for everything. Really? Because he's got all the outtakes and all the stuff where, where he hid who Trump was from people. He put okay, Trump on TV, made second. him a TV star. Well, hold on, hold on. This that is, is the exactly number it. one show <laughs> in the country for 10 years. Okay. What he wanted was Mark Burnett to give him and the Democratic Party outtake to make Trump look bad. And Burnett, to his credit, refused to do that. This and is Howard what, Stern, is, actually. Howard Stern, too. They were trying to get Stern to release yes, everything. Yes, and to, yes. you know, Stern's such an ass, I can't stand him in every way. But right. I will say to his credit, he also didn't flip and release stuff. Right. Um, sorry, man. Uh, hold sorry, on. Yeah. Burnett did. I, mean, I blame Mark Burnett for everything. Everything. Because he's got all the outtakes and all the stuff where, where, where he hid who Trump was from he people. Hit it. He, he hit put it. Trump on TV, made him a TV star in Fly Over America. There it if is. you lived in New York, you knew that Trump was never a table mate at an event. If you lived in New York, and you put Trump on TV, made him a TV star in Fly Over America. If he was from people. He put Trump on TV, made him a TV star in Fly Over America. That's disgusting. He, horrible he put Trump on area. TV, made him a TV star in Fly Over America. There you go. And wow. the condescension that wow. that's it. Right and there. not suppress it. It's not just him. I mean, yeah. Cuomo is trying to get away from that to save his own political life. But Baldwin is still living in 2010, 2005. And, and the condescension is breathtaking. And he's stuck. He's stuck in a political bubble. He sees the Democratic House is on fire. He knows he's got to escape. And there's nowhere for this fat fuck to run to. Agree, but uh, yeah. wow, wow, uh, but yeah, that was the when I heard, it, I was like, I can't believe he actually, and you're right, he can't even suppress it. It's so, right. uh, you know, in that 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 condescension and to they can't everybody. Explain, even though they intellectually know, which comes up now, that the working class has fled the Democratic Party and has embraced Trump, so they know this, they still can't get their minds around it. All right, so let's see. Go to about an hour. Right, a lot of data. Hmm. And you have a family and you have kids and my wife. And if it weren't for my wife, I mean, if it weren't for my wife, my wife is probably, is literally one of the five most remarkable human beings I've ever met in my life. And being Even Gandhi can't hold a candle to her. I don't know. I'm thinking he hasn't read Reddit lately. Reddit doesn't like her, and I know that they have a problem with her. <laughs> yes. Um, Alec, go to check out uh, reddit.com slash Hilaria Baldwin. Okay? It's it, it's Hilaria Baldwin. you got to have it with the trill. She's a female Gandhi, Eric. Yes, she is. Beyond her physical beauty that I'm in love with my wife as a woman, and I'm her husband, and blah, blah, blah. And attraction and all those things. My wife is a things. very special person who saved my life. She saved Nobel my Prize. life. She, get she the took Nobel control Prize. of my life for a while and said, let's just uh, sit down and, 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 and do some very serious thinking about what's going to happen. And I do believe, I mean, the, the process is slow. I am deeply, deeply, deeply resentful and bitter about how slow the process has been. 
I'm a resentful I've had to man. Wait for months and months and months before somebody <laughs> could peel me off of the case. But I'm going to have a lot to say about that once the report comes in. Once the report comes in, I'm going to have nuts. a lot to say again. He's going to have a lot right. to say again. Don't worry, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. He will it's have coming. a lot to say. So, folks, we definitely will be doing another episode because Alec has a lot to say, and I'll yeah, be I'm here for it. From him, he's he's very tiresome, but entertaining at the same time, Eric. <laughs> I mean, this We're is a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, yeah, our our one off episode because you know something about film sets has turned into freaking. This is twenty four now. This that's how many episodes <laughs> we've done on this guy. I, I think I think this is the twenty fourth. Yes. Oh my lord! Oh my lord! <laughs> Well, if they want more of this, how can they get more of this, Eric? I mean, should they subscribe to locals? And absolutely, and, and they should subscribe to locals. And locals may be a good them. place for them to start, and even subscribing to this channel. But uh, the local seems to be a place where these people all discuss all this stuff. Well, not, not only that, I have put up every episode of America's Untold Stories on locals ad free. Why? So you don't have to, you don't have to go through the YouTube ads or anything else. They're all there. I'll I'm try to be at, on, on top of it a little bit better so I don't have so any lag. How many episodes are there of everything? 73? Oh, dear God. Oh, that's a lot. Something like that. And yeah, how many yeah. subs? We only have 30,000 subscribers? Well, uh, no, we don't have 30,000 yet. Oh, we, we well, if these people get off their asses and get us to 30,000, <laughs> I think maybe it builds momentum, Eric, right? Doesn't the algorithm begin to feed yes. on itself, feeding its own young and developing its own rhythm and building and building? Mm -hmm. It all it all, all does help. But you know what though? We do have some heroes, because oh. I didn't want to interrupt the flow. But I mean, um, Beverly Fitch became a oh, YouTube like member. Yeah, way to go, Beverly Fitch. I don't know what that logo is there, but what is that? A um, fish head? It's a fish. It's a fish oh, from so. Fitch. Okay, right. It's a fish head. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tarkina Meyer, hi, welcome back. Um, with the Amber Heard, Heard expose Heard. being released about oh yeah. A lot of crazy underage adult parties. The cinematographer oh. history. Yeah, that. Oh. Yeah. That could be. Well, she did do sex slaves uh, in the basement. Uh, cellar. Work. The alliteration. In sex the slaves cellar. in the yeah, cellar. Sex slaves in the cellar she did for the BBC uh, back in the day when she was working for the BBC. So yep. who, who knows what she would have worked on if uh, she had not been assassinated by There Alex. was a rumor that she had a couple things lined up. but um, Yeah. Well, these projects are in development all the time. You know. Thank you, Smarty Matt. Oh. Smarty. Smarty Matt. Smarty is smarty. Thank you. The past uh, couple of streams. Wow. I guess wow. They... I, that's awesome. Um, uh, it's amazing. Jack Ryan did fire off a nuke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could have happened. Don't Could forget. Have. It was uh, Hutchins father who was in the hunt for red October played and depicted <laughs> by Sean Connery. That uh, is true. That is, I think that's where we started 24 episodes ago. Right. Uh, no, that was episode three. So episode it, it, three had Alec Baldwin and and his fa uh, father and father depicted yeah. by Sean Connery and Hunt for Red October. Yep, I just um, can't quit you all. Love you guys. Thanks, Todd. Well, good. Uh, thank you for not quitting. Right, don't quit before the miracle, bro. I know we got and we need those subs. We're trying to at yeah. least beat Como. If we get to take 30, us Como, we're in a war against uh, Cuomo. Well, we got to right. get past that. He's at thirty-one or something. He might pick up some more. So you got to be us a to daily uh, uh, grind, I think, to defeat Cuomo at his. We own got game. to. We right. have to because he's got he's got a team. He's got people backing him up. We don't. It's uh, just me and Hunley, folks, and Hunley's cat. Yes, and, and a wolf um, and Dolan and Oswald. Oh boy, look, they don't have this. This is what Hunley's got that they don't have. <laughs> now, this thing is showing up all around the country, apparently, in photos that were put in Scotland, local. dude. It showed up in Scotland. We have one in Scotland. It's kind of like that little figurine, the elf that would show up around. Oh, the yeah. World, right? Yep, yep. yep. Let's Definitely. See. Oh, Georgina's back in there. Oh, hi, Georgina. Wow, thank you. I shot himself in the foot. Yes. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm a yeah. professional interviewer. But I would have done him. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you. That's. I don't. I just think he can't help himself. There's some sort of, you know, he's not working in film. Keep this in mind. The average day for Alec Baldwin is to not work, and he has 74 children who are probably driving him insane out in the Hamptons. Oh no, kidding! Thank you, Little Rock. Great show tonight. Oh, th that's the ultimate compliment. Helps me work in the I, brief I, I while listening. I always tell show is by how little actual work I get done. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you. Very Jennifer, we're 49. Um, Thank you. You are the best, hands down. You too. Wow, that's interesting. Thank wow. you. Thank you. Um, thanks for the super sticker. 
Alex, um, thank you, Sargon the later. So not a cod, but later. Later. And Georgina, Georgina again. Back. Look at this. Now she's bidding against herself in an auction. <laughs> she's <laughs> going you. up against her own uh, uh, super chats. You know, uh, Georgina rocks. Colors, I guess orange must be 20 or something. You yes. Know. Now, let's not forget PayPal, which really helps with the book fund to get the uh, General Walker book, which I had to give to my friend Tom because he didn't have a book. And now, I again, I am bereft. A, hold on. Don't do this, Hunley. Hunley Everybody don't do has it. the books. <laughs> I don't know. What again, I'm the only one without this Walker book because I brought it over to Tom's house the other night. And oh, now he's God. got it, and I don't have it. But now, it was too big to bring to Texas. They wanted me to pay for an extra ticket for the book. I thought that was outrageous from American Airlines. All you have to do is walk around here, and they just yeah, but the book shows up on park benches. And they said that was the equivalent of a small baby, and I have to buy another ticket. Well, so. dude, you're in Dallas or the Dallas area. It should be on a park bench somewhere near a bathroom. Well, we're going to find out tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to go into Dealey <laughs> Plaza and find out exactly what's going on over here. Um, Shantan, the best doctor. I don't know what that one is. Uh, Tippett, the badge man. Yeah, we're going to we're going to look into a lot of this stuff. I'm going to be here for a couple more days and we're going to go to Fort Worth. And uh, oh, look, Pasha's in the house. I left a meme in the comments of this episode and locals. Enjoy. All right. Oh, okay. I'm into it, Moyer. I'm into it. Any relation to Bill Moyer? Yeah. Uh, why would the man not want a thorough investigation? Hmm. Mm, I don't know. Interesting. Maybe because he's already decided. But you know what, Mark? Um, I know that. Uh, oh, we got one more. Hold Sheriff on. Alan Mendoza is on the uh, ballot for Santa Fe County. Oh, that's interesting. Um, oh, he's up, but she's not. Okay, but is, is he running for DA or he's running for? He's sheriff? probably running for sheriff again. Uh, and not Mary Cormac out was the DA. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's really interesting. I wonder That'd be amazing if he was he running for the sheriff game. again. That's interesting. So he wants this to come out and get it over with, or at least celebrate his work in it. Some, some combination of that thing. By the way, we do answer questions in the comments section down below. Feel free to comment. Eric and I try to get to all those comments. We can't get to all of them because now it's no. just gone crazy. The comments of all people are binge watching all 75 videos and asking me stuff that we've forgotten about because it's been over a year. So um, we'll try to get to your comments. Uh, but I think the main thing is to join locals for, for how much is it? Five bucks a month. Um, oh, oh, what's with this VPN? VPN? When are we starting this VPN um, ad campaign? Uh, so I got to get the contract. I haven't got the contract. Uh, all right. Yet. Okay. All right. But they can join but, locals. Hold on. No relation to Bill. He's plural. I'm <laughs> singular. Bill Moyers? Oh, yes. yes that's, that's right. right. Bill Moyers. Yes, that's absolutely true. Right. He's a singular Moyer. Well, right. this is important, though, Mark. Hang on a second. So you, you, right. I know you're I know you really like Oswald and you're concerned mm -hmm. that Oswald is lonely, that I leave right. him alone. Right. So fortunately, he has oh, a friend. See, look at the difference on Look at that bear. That bear is 100 times better than that dog. That no. dog looks like he fell into chocolate pudding in a race riot somewhere. But no, that no, grow no. bear, that grow bear with that, does it come with the shirt? Yes. Oh, that's, they both that, do. That's, that's great. I, I'm getting that bear. I don't care what you do. That bear is better than the dog. Oh hell no! Uh, it doesn't even look like a dog, to be honest with you. I know uh, the, the no, bear no, is no. really. Do not talk about Oswald that way. Oswald is a the grow patsy. bear is the one to get folks. Now Oswald has looking, suffered enough. <laughs> if you're looking for a gift that keeps on giving, get the grow bear or the 16 foot coffee mug by Ziggy that you can buy through her website, which is now my fruit bowl on my kitchen table, holding hundreds and different types of fruit in it. I didn't know what to do with this thing. Um, really We're going to have to have a poll and, and prove out how obviously Oswald is the superior. <laughs> Oswald Thank versus you. the bear episode 12. Let's see who That's right. uh, wins that one. I think people are going to vote with their feet this time. I just want to give a shout out to one thing that just happened in the recall of Gasson as I was coming down here. Uh, we turned in over 700,000 signatures to a guy named Dean Logan, who is the registrar in L.A. County. And he uh, took 200,000 out of this pile of 700,000. And we've come up miraculously 40,000 short of recalling the communist Gaston as the DA of Los Angeles, one of the most rigged recalls in the history of the United States. Now, this guy, Dean Logan, in his resume claims and brags about going to communist China and the Soviet Union to see how their elections were run. 
as his guide to how to run elections here. I, I can't make this up. It's actually He's, in his bio. It's in his bio. And he oh came God. down from Seattle. And people warned me about him from up in Seattle, who are uh, conservatives up in Seattle, saying this guy, he refused to allow any observers of the re the, the counting of signatures, Eric. He threw out 200,000 out of 700,000 signatures, refused to have observers, and refused to say who the actual counters were. If you can get hmm. your like, were they city employees? Were they immigrants? Were they on the payroll? He won't acknowledge anything other than Gaston is the DA and cannot be recalled now. Even San One Francisco could get rid of freaking Chesa Bowden. This you can't get rid of Gaston. Well, this is the this is the second time now that they've had shenanigans in this recall. I mean, it's really going to come down to the election, but he is now good for at least another year releasing every single violent offender in Los Angeles to uh, wreak havoc on the streets of L.A. <laughs> Beverly. <laughs> I was wondering why it's statue, not a crap statue. Well, the last is saying it was a crap statue I have in my yard. I was like, oh, well, I didn't think it looked that bad. So <laughs> that's <is> funny. <laughs> oh, folks, this is amazing. Um, I hope you check us out on Locals and come by. There's not going to be a show on Friday. Um, what? What are you uh, trying yeah. to pull, Huntley? These people have been died by your show. Now you, you, you what are you taking, a health day, a, a bereavement no, day? No, I, 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 unlike some people, I, I have a day job because Wait I need more minute. subscribers so I can eventually leave a day job. Right. But until Huntley, I get enough subscribers. Job. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to have a show any longer because unless you can subscribe and get Huntley out of his day job, he is going into a, a protest mood here where he's going to hold up the shows. Now, I'm going to try to shoot some footage of where we are in Dealey Plaza and around Dallas in little segments of what I perceive to be historic landmarks of the assassination. They may not be everybody's historic landmarks, but they are my historic landmarks. And I'll comment on that footage, which we can either do as an episode where Hunley and I can talk over it, whatever you people want to do. But I want to get the footage and put it on locals at least and go yeah, around. We'll, we'll get it area. up and work it out somehow, too. It's easy to for you to say it. you're not going to be here Friday. So um, we'll do no, it. No, but I'm probably, I'm probably going to be seeing the footage ahead of then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a true. that's true. And then so, we're going to get uh, we'll get Sapruta footage that was altered, and we'll doctor that even more. But don't touch my footage on me. All right. So until then, see everybody on Locals. Okay. Thank, thank you. you.